Hello again, folks. And that hello again, folks, is dedicated to Dutch, my mate who recently discovered my YouTube channel and has been taking the mickey out of me for that opening statement for the last two or three weeks. So, yeah, that one's for you, buddy. Um, onwards and upwards. Right, tonight we are taking a look at this Tandy electronic TV scoreboard. Tandy being the British arm of Radio Shack, as was. Um, and, yeah, this is probably one of the first electronic TV games that was ever produced. Um, it's not technically a console. You know, it doesn't take a cartridge or anything else. Um, it was simply a, a, an electronic game that you could plug into an old analogue TV. Pong, in essence. You know, the boop, boop, boop. The little ball going across the screen <laughs> pardon the uh, sound effects um, this one also came with a light gun for a couple of shooting games as well um, so yeah we'll, we'll take a look inside it, um, see what we get inside the box, open the device up itself and we're actually going to make a small repair to this and I will say it's not an electronic repair which is unusual for me, so yeah enough rambling let's have a look inside so yeah here we go uh, Yeah, sold, according to Wikipedia this particular model was sold between 1970 Six and the early 80s. Four popular sports games, two exciting shooting games, a photoelectric pistol, on screen digital scoring, and these batteries are an adapter. Variable controls for ball speed, paddle size, and bounce angle. And uh, yeah, take aim on, the, on great video action with Tanny's electronic TV scoreboard trademark. Um, yeah, like I say, predecessor to consoles, really basic, and uh, yeah. You may well have owned one. If you did, of course, pop it down in the comments below. What do we get? Well, we get the uh, instruction manual, which is rather comprehensive. I have had a little look at it. Um, multiple languages. Exactly what you'd expect, to be honest. We get the main... Uh, it's a, I'm going to call it a console. Uh, I know it's not really, but yeah, we'll call it a console. Which has a permanently fixed RF cable. Go into UK HF style plug. I don't know if they use these in other countries, but that's certainly what we use here in the UK. I think in the States you tend to use F type connectors. Uh, well, that's what I understand anyway. Again, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the left hand player uh, controller just pops off and it's got the uh, cable inside, you know, you can coil up inside and then clip it into place to make it nice and tidy. And of course, inside this is just a, a, a potentiometer. Um, we may open one of these up, but yeah, I'm reasonably content it's just a potentiometer, so there's nothing really going to be much to see inside that. Um, of course, the, the main sort of part of the console, the and indeed the right hand player uh, controller, we've got the, the control there for the the player uh, with various switches for you know what we want to set up ball speed etc whether we want to auto serve or manual serve using the serve button power switch and a rotary selector up here for the different games set to practice as you can see we've got an ad astra power supply 8 volt um for television games 100 milliamp output complies with British standard 3861 made in United Kingdom yeah and a standard United Kingdom type plug however wouldn't meet standards now because the uh, live and neutral pins are unsheathed uh, of course normal sort of UK plugs if I can get one without unplugging something important uh, let's take the hoover out the workshop hoover um, yeah you can see it's got a sheath plug Although in saying that, it does look like the pins might be slightly shorter, very slightly shorter. But yeah, wouldn't make standards now. Okay, folks, and what else have we got? Well, we've got the aforementioned gun. Lots of packet of silica gel and all the licensing information for various countries. So we'll get the box out of the way. And here's the gun. Now, this is the uh, repair we're going to do. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it. It's not going to be an electronics repair. It's going to be a repair to the trigger. Because, unfortunately, when it came, this was rattling, rattling around in the bottom of the box. The trigger has snapped. But you may have seen that for my, from my community post that I've recently purchased a 3D printer. And I'm not going to lie to you, as you can probably see from the holes in this. I've had this open. I've taken the trigger out of a, and basically made a model 3d model of the trigger and i've printed it out and it is 
currently is stuck to the bed of the printer so you're going to see it what's and all whether it fits or not it will be a first time trial fit so hopefully fingers crossed it will do the job and um, but yeah there's just a tube in there with uh, a photo diode we'll open this up in fact we'll open this up first and have a look interestingly on this uh this gun there was i think about five different lengths of screw there was these three here which have a nut you know the machine screws and these three here were all different size self tappers and if we open it up you will see we've got the photodiode there we've got a switch actuated by the, the trigger and in here We've got not a lot, just a tuning line package, some caps and a couple of resistors. That's pretty much it. And then this goes into uh, this uh, lead here with a five pin DIN plug. So I suppose while we're in here, we might as well test fit the new trigger, which I printed. I'm not an expert on 3D printing or 3D modelling. I just use Tinkercad, if I'm totally honest, and use some different shapes to um, to basically get what I wanted or what I think I wanted. Let's see, time will tell whether it's uh, going to fit. So apologies while I struggle to take this back in place. We'll tuck these cables around the back there and pop that in there like that. I think it went down the back, did it? I don't want to uh, mess, <laughs> spend all this time getting it fixed for it and just to get tangled up in cable snipped. So there we go, apologies. Okay, right, you probably heard that. That was a bed getting pulled forward and just ripping off here is a new trigger so i'm just going to peel the skirt off this that sounded a little bit wrong okay i'm just got a sharp knife and always cut away from yourself That looks reasonably neat. And let's compare it to the the one that uh, came with it. So what did we do with a little bit of that? I'm not going to edit this, boys, boys and girls. I'm just going to go with it. So if you want to fast forward bits, please feel free to do so. Where did I put it? Can you see it? Ah, it's up here. So here is a original trigger. And here is my 3D printed version. Fairly close. Um, yeah, the, the angle of the actual trigger itself isn't brilliant. But, of course, the, the important bit is, does it fit? So that's, an, uh, that's a good start. It goes over the little peg nicely. Oh, that looks like it's going to work perfectly. So we'll pop that back on. Like so. Make sure it all snaps together nicely. Yes, perfect. Happy with that. Right, let's get the old one out of the way and have a look at the actual main uh, unit itself. So, we'll get some silica gel in the battery uh, compartment. Doesn't look like there's been batteries in it. I suppose if it came with a mains adapter, maybe, uh, I suppose back in the 70s, batteries might have been expensive. I mean, they're expensive now. And when you're talking about six, yeah, it's probably more cost effective to, to get the DC adapter with it. May have been sold with it as a as a package deal. I know uh, Tandy did used to do stuff like that. I miss Tandy. Yeah, it's obviously we don't have Tandy in the UK anymore. We don't have Maplins in the UK anymore. We don't have any sort of real electronic shops on the high street that you can that you can go into and, and pick up some bits and pieces i mean we've got farm l and cpc and rs and that but 
Um, yeah, it's just a shame that all these uh, stores have disappeared. Okay, what have we got inside? Right, we have the main chip, which is the AY38500. Did a little bit of research that went on Wikipedia and it did say it utilised that chip. Uh, made by, I think it was General Instrument or General Instruments. And that's the first ever sort of electronic TV um you know chipset if you like um the 8500-1 was for the uh, american market you know the ntsc market and the 8500 which you see here is the pal version for the uk and europe um of course there's a um, rf out that's just been tacked onto a couple of points of the board all nice um you know strain relief on here you know they've, they've They've done I did a good job. We've got a couple of heat sticks there keeping the, the wire into the, the gun connector there. It's all reasonably tidy. It's all been gunked up as well, but not a lot on here. We've got a small look at that transistor. Can you see that? I've never seen one. I've seen ones in metal cans and stuff like that, but never one in a little domed package like that. What is it? It is a 5028. What is a 5028? Let's see what uh, the internet says 5028 uh, KTS 50 it's an NPN transistor yeah never seen one of those in my life again if you have Pop it down in the comments below. We've got a couple more uh, standard things here. We've got an 8050. And a couple of those few resistors. And of course the little ribbon cable going onto the, the switches. And uh, rotary knob at the back. That's our can there with a modulator inside. That's going to be converting the video out from the uh, uh, 8500 into... You know, it's been going to be converting that signal into RF, uh, UHF signal, going to the analog TV. Little, uh, yeah, just little bits and pieces that you'd expect to see, electrolytic caps and all that. Got a speaker on here. Um, I have tested this. It doesn't um, output audio. It's purely the video signal uh, outputs on, and the game audio comes out the speaker here. So yeah, not a lot really to see. Of course, uh, as I said on the on the left of yeah, the left-hand player control, I thought it'd just be a pot. And indeed, there is the right-hand player, and it is indeed just a pot. So that's going to be, uh, depending on what resistance is coming in, it's going to depend where it positions the the uh, bat on the screen. So yeah, nothing really much else to say about that. Reasonably well-constructed. Uh, they are machine screws as well, I note. So that's, uh, that's a nice touch. You don't get stuff like that nowadays unless you're paying a fortune. But that's just how they did it back then. A little bit better than they do now. Alright, let's get this put back together. And uh, we'll have a play. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video now. Uh, sorry, I'll stop the video now. I will record a bit of me playing on the, the screen. And then I'll come back to you. See you in a moment. Right, here we go. Got it in this hand. Ah... Uh. And it's just like like I said before, it's just a your old school sort of pong game. Um, this is not easy to do. I'm filming with one hand, speaking with the other, and uh, no, I'm not. I'm not speaking with the. <laughs> I'm speaking with my mouth and my vocal cords, and I'm controlling the game with uh, my right hand. But there you get the get the idea. Oh come on, at least get. Two shots, here we go. I didn't put it on fast mode. But that's about as uh, old school as gaming gets. Right, let me put this down and then we'll finish up on the bench. Catch you in a second. Welcome back again. Right, I've just reviewed the footage I've already taken so far and I've realised that I haven't told you how a light gun works or indeed showing it working on this video. So, we'll address the uh, how does it work first, I suppose. Um, it's actually quite simple. The gun gets plugged in the console, console gets plugged into the TV and you play the game. The game is 
fairly similar to the Pong game that you saw me just playing, i.e. there's a white dot moves across the screen. Except on the shooting games, it's a white square or a white patch around an inch in size. Um, and what happens when you point the gun and you see the white patch and pull your nice 3D printed trigger is that the system is looking for light hitting that uh, photodiode inside. So if there is a white patch in front of the 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 barrel if you like um it will come in it will hit that focusing uh, lens that you saw before and then hit the diode uh, the photodiode and then of course register that you've seen the target and of course you'll get a nice one or two you know your score will appear on the screen if you pull your nice 3d printed trigger and it doesn't see that white patch i.e it sees anywhere else in the screen or off screen it doesn't see that white light of course you're not going to get the point that's in essence how it works. Why I've not shown you me playing it on this uh, this video? Well, it doesn't work with modern LCD displays. And from what I can tell, there's a couple of reasons for that. The processing speed of the image isn't fast on an LCD uh, display. And the contrast isn't as good as you get on a CRT monitor. So, of course, a CRT monitor, your, your, your picture's built extremely fast using that cathode ray tube raster scan. And the contrast is quite literally black and white. Um, you, you know, it is, it is a bright white patch and you just don't get that with an LCD display. And that's pretty much why, it, you know, why it doesn't work. Um, I might be able to get my hands on a CRT monitor or TV. Um I will need to dig into that. I know there's one knocking around at work that's never ever going to get used again. So I might speak to whoever owns it and say, "Can I can I steal that?" And uh, we might might do a follow up video on that if if there's an appetite for it. But it, it's a fairly you know you, you know how it works now. So there we go. Right, rambling on as I always do, and I have indeed done throughout this video, especially when I was putting the gun back together. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you'd like to add any comments down below, by all means, please do so. Any interaction is always good. Um, if you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so, click on my fat head down here. And until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and all the best.